paper. Today, I've announced that we in the UK will send an additional 6,000 missiles and provide £25 million in unrestricted funding for Ukraine's armed forces, more than doubling the lethal aid we've provided to date. We're bolstering our support for the NATO countries on the front line, sending a new deployment of UK troops to Bulgaria on top of doubling our troops both in Poland and in Estonia. This is just the beginning. We must support a free and democratic Ukraine in the long term. This is a fellow European democracy fighting a war of national defence. NATO and G7 leaders were also united today in our determination to continue turning the screws on the Kremlin's war machine, including by weaning ourselves off Russian oil and gas and reshaping global energy security. The UK has already hit over a, over a thousand Russian individuals and entities in our toughest ever sanctions, and the Foreign Secretary has announced 65 new sanctions against Russian banks, weapons manufacturers and oligarchs just this morning. I also discussed the humanitarian response with our allies and partners today as we continue to see huge numbers of Ukrainians flee their homes. And the message that President Putin can take from today's extraordinary meeting of NATO and the G7 is this, Ukraine is not alone. We stand with the people of Kiev, of Mariupol, of Lviv and Donetsk. And as President Zelensky has said himself, the people of Ukraine will prevail, and Putin must fail, and he will fail. Thank you all very much, and I'm going to take a few questions from uh, as many of you as I, as I can, though we have to rush for a, for a plane. Uh, let's go to Nick Beek of the BBC. Nick. Prime Minister, thanks very much. You say that you will send them to Ukraine. Thank you, Prime Minister. You say that you're sending the, the quality and quantity of weapons that Ukraine uh, deserves and needs, but it was clear from what President Zelensky was saying to you and other world leaders that he would like more. So first of all, are you comfortable with the level of weapons you're sending collectively? And secondly, how uncomfortable does it make you feel that by rolling out a no-fly zone, by rolling out NATO troops on the ground in Ukraine, and by refusing to give any sort of indication of red lines, that really the only end to this is when President Putin decides he's had enough. Well, thanks very much, Nick. And you're right to put your finger on the, the agony that everybody feels in this, in this group, uh, all, all Western countries, the whole of NATO, uh, the G7, about our uh, inability to, to do more to help given the constraints we face. And I think it's fair to say that uh, there isn't a, a Western uh, democracy that's currently contemplating putting, putting boots on the ground in, in Ukraine. And we've got, to be, we've got to be clear about that. Nor is there uh, a, a country that is uh, willing to enforce a no-fly zone in the way that uh, you, we would so like to, but unfortunately it, it does mean uh, it, uh, air to ground attacks on uh, Russian air defences and it does mean uh, taking down uh, Russian fast jets and asking the RAF uh, to do that. That's not something that uh, any country here uh, is contemplating. What we are doing is steadily ratcheting up uh, the, uh, the, the movement of, of lethal but defensive weaponry uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, and that is growing in volume the whole time. And uh, what the Americans are doing, and what, the, what they have done is really quite extraordinary already, and the UK is, is proud of, uh, of what we've contributed. Uh, I'll go to uh, Sam Coates of, uh, of Sky. Thank you, Prime Minister. Sam Coates of Sky. Um, President Zelensky, interestingly, didn't repeat his call for a uh, no-fly zone when he addressed NATO leaders. Instead, he was very, very specific. He wants tanks and jets. Are NATO members... Are, is the United Kingdom going to give him tanks and jets? And if not, why not? Uh, thanks, Sam. He, di he did indeed uh, call for, for tanks, and there's a, there's a particular reason for that. To what, uh, uh, what President Zelensky wants is to try to uh, relieve Mariupol 
uh, and, and, to, to, and to help uh, the, the thousands of Ukrainian fighters uh, in the city. Uh, to, to that end, he does need armour as he sees it. Uh, we're, we're looking at what we can do to help, but I've got to tell you, uh, logistically at the moment, it looks very difficult, for both with armour and with, uh, with jets. Uh, we're very conscious of what he's asking for. At the moment, uh, we're looking at the, 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 the equipment that we think is uh, more immediately valuable is, uh, is uh, uh, missiles that will enable the Ukrainians to protect themselves against bombardment from the air, uh, but also to deal with the, uh, the Grad rocket launchers, uh, the, uh, the, the Russian heavy artillery. Uh, that is doing such uh, death and dealing such death and destruction in the cities. Uh, and there, I think, if we can uh, really help them, uh, that would be extremely valuable because th they need protection from that absolutely merciless uh, onslaught from, uh, from artillery and from, and from the rocket launchers. Uh, uh, James Mates, ITV. Uh, Prime Minister, you've also spoken about weaning uh, Europe off Russian oil and gas. There'll be a discussion tonight that you won't be part of at the European Council. Is Europe doing enough? Are the Germans doing enough? What will Britain do to help other countries who rely more on Russian oil and gas to wean themselves off it? Thanks, James. It, look, and, and I, I just want to say that this is easier for some countries than it is for, for others, and everybody can, can see that. And uh, clearly the dependency in, uh, in Germany and in, in Italy is, is, is very strong. Uh, and there are many other European countries that depend on, uh, on Russian gas. But what they're all doing is moving uh, to extricate themselves from that position and to uh, avoid being in a, a blackmailed by by Vladimir Putin. And I think that uh, what Olaf Scholz has done, the steps that they're taking, I think it's, it's heroic. And I, I applaud what Germany is doing. They've set themselves uh, a, a deadlines to move away from oil and gas. I, I don't think it'll be easy. Uh, and the Italians are, are doing the same. I don't think it'll be easy for them. But it's the right thing to do uh, in, the, in, the, in the long term, in the medium term. And uh, we will help. Uh, of course, and one of, the, one of the ways that I think we should all work together is in the sharing and the uh, development of, of alternative uh, provision, not least wind power. I mean, the, the, the Baltic countries, for instance, are heavily dependent on, uh, on gas, but they have a fantastic future as, as generators of clean uh, renewable energy. We want to help that. We have, we have a lot of experience of it. Uh, Jason Graves, Daily Mail. Thanks, Prime Minister. Um, the Kremlin has uh, named you today as their public enemy number one, um, saying you're, the, you're leading the kind of anti-Russian uh, resistance uh, internationally. I wondered why you thought that had happened, whether you thought we were going to get any blowback uh, back home from that, uh, and how you feel about it. And you just mentioned uh, wind farms. Is the price of all this going to be sort of going back to having more onshore wind farms back home? OK, well, look, there's a couple of uh, points there, Jason. First of all, I think it's very, very important for everybody uh, to understand that I don't think there's a single person around the table in, in NATO uh, or the G7 uh, who is against uh, Russians or the, or the Russian people. Absolutely not. Least of all me. Uh, I, think I, probably, I'm, I think I'm probably the only prime minister in UK history to be called Boris. Uh, you, you know, I, 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 I have... I, I think, I, think I, I have that distinction. Uh, uh, and... I am not remotely anti-Russian, uh, but uh, I think what we all agree is that what Vladimir Putin is doing, the way he's leading Russia at the moment, is utterly catastrophic, uh, that his invasion of Ukraine is inhuman and, and barbaric, and the, and the conduct of that invasion is, is now moving into uh, the type of behaviour that, as I've said before, we haven't seen in the continent of Europe for for 80 years, uh, and uh, it, it's horrific. So you can be, you can be sympathetic towards uh, ordinary Russians who are being so badly uh, led, uh, but you can be deeply hostile to uh, the decisions of Vladimir Putin, the way he's, uh, way he's leading his country. Uh, Euro, Euro, and yeah, sorry, you had another question about um, onshore wind. Uh, look, I, I want to be clear. I think the, the massive opportunity for the UK is in offshore wind, and we've got good at that. Uh, we were, until very recently, I, I'm slightly to my irritation, we seem to be overtaken now by China, but we were, until recently, uh, the biggest producer of offshore wind 
in the world. And one of the things I want to be setting out in the uh, forthcoming uh, British energy security strategy is how we can uh, regain our leaders, the number one, and where we're going to be doing it. And I think you can do it in a, a completely environmentally friendly way. You can generate phenomenal quantities of renewable uh, energy at, at zero marginal cost. And it's, it's, uh, it, is the, it is the way forward. Um, Euronews, um, uh, Meve McMahon. No, not no Euronews. Forgive me. Um, I'm going to go to, to Natasha Clark from The Sun. Hi. Natasha. Uh, Jim Stolenberg said earlier today that there will be severe consequences if Russia does go ahead and use chemical weapons in Ukraine. What does that mean? Does it mean boots on the ground, or is that something that we're completely ruling out already? Um, and you said earlier that you'd like to see Ukraine handed the hosting of the next World Cup. Would you like to see them automatically qualify for this year's World Cup? Uh, right, OK, the tag. Uh, so, f first of all, on, CB, on chemical, biological, uh, tactical... Uh, nuclear weapons, uh, all of these are viewed with utter horror by people around the table uh, today. I, w I just heard uh, from my, my friend uh, Fumio Kishida, who, who represents the only uh, country in the G7 actually to have experienced uh, nuclear weapons on his, or see, had, uh, has seen his country attacked uh, by nuclear weapons. There is a visceral horror of the use of these weapons of mass destruction. Uh, I think that if Putin were to uh, engage in anything like that, uh, the consequences would be very, very uh, severe. You have to uh, have a bit of uh, ambiguity about your, uh, about your response, but I think it would be uh, catastrophic for him uh, if he were to do that. And uh, I, I, think that he, uh, I think that he understands that. But you know, when, you look, when you look at what he's saying, I think Joe Biden is right uh, to warn, because you know, when, when, they, when the Russians start doing this stuff, about, um, oh, well, we've, you know, the, there are factories in Ukraine producing uh, American uh, biological uh, weaponry. You know that that is a prelude uh, to a false flag operation and they're gonna, uh, they could well do something. Uh, but I think it would be a, a, a profound and a disastrous mistake for, uh, for Putin were he, to, were he to do that. On, on um, Ukraine qualifying for the... Um, for the European, is it the European? I, I'm not. Look, I, football is not is not my best subject. As you, as you. The World Cup. You mean should they be given a bye and, 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 and qualify automatically? Sounds like a good idea to me, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm out of area here. I've got I've got to admit that's not my strong subject. I don't why, I, I don't see I don't see why not is my is my view. Um, James, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to comment on that, James. I'm not going to comment on that. But let's go to... But I, look, let me put it, put it this way. Given what Ukraine has been going through, uh, given the, the privations that uh, uh, Ukrainian footballers have had to endure, I'm sure that uh, every possible uh, sympathy uh, and allowances should be made for them. Let me, let me put it that way. How about that? Uh, let's go to Natalia Drozdjak from Bloomberg. Yeah, I'm uh, right here. Thank you so much. Yes. Two, two quick questions. Uh, on the nuclear uh, threat, how, how concrete is that? Can you give us a sense of those no. discussions? Um, and secondly, you mentioned this morning uh, that uh, allies are examining ways to stop Putin from using Russia's gold reserves. Could you tell us whether those uh, discussions have moved on today? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Natalia. So uh, I think it's very important to stress that I think that the discussion of the use of uh, nuclear weapons is, is a distraction, and it's intended to be a distraction uh, from what is really going on. And that is a savage attack uh, with conventional uh, means uh, on innocent people in urban centers in Ukraine. Absolutely barbaric use of artillery and, and uh, mortars and, and rockets, as, uh, and, as I've described, thermobaric bombs uh, included, it, it now seems. Uh, that is what is going on, and what we're talking about uh, is the right of the Ukrainian people to be equipped with the weapons to defend themselves. And all discussion of nuclear weapons is intended to, to frame this as a, as a confrontation between Russia as a nuclear power and other nuclear powers. That's not what's going on. What's going on is a confrontation between Russia and entirely innocent uh, people in Ukraine. That's, that's what it's between. And what we're trying to do is help uh, those people, and I think that's in, that is morally 
uh, the right thing to do. On, on gold reserves, um, the, there is evidence that the Russians may be trying to get round, I mean, the Russians are obviously get, going to try to get round the, the sanctions on their, on their gold, and uh, we're taking steps to try to make sure that there's no, uh, no leakage, uh, no sale of, uh, of bullion uh, into, into markets around the world, now, and, and uh, that's what we're working on. Uh, last question to Steve Swinford of The Times. Prime Minister, just to come back to Natasha's question, uh, we heard from a NATO, uh, sorry, from a Western official today, um, that if Russia did use chemical weapons uh, in Ukraine, it would be highly unlikely that there would be a military intervention from NATO. Can I just clarify, are you in that position or would you rule that out or do you think it's possible that we could have a military intervention? Is it, is it something you're prepared to consider? I just want to, re to repeat the answer I gave to Natasha, which is I think that uh, any such action would be not only uh, uh, morally repugnant and in in indefensible, uh, but disastrous for, uh, for Putin as well. Uh, and and I, I think, well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave it there and, and rush for the plane under strict instructions. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I do remember you, and I'm very sorry to come on. Okay. He, he remembers me from when I, Thank was, you. A, when I was a journalist. Okay, Mr. fair Prime enough. Prime Minister. Yes. So um, uh, now you have. Uh, I'm going to re regret this, by the way. That's what you, had, you had talked with uh, Mr. Erdogan, and you uh, both uh, um, the most friends of Ukraine, and Ukrainians uh, hope op on you, on Great Britain, and Turkey, and you told that you can provide more armament for Ukraine, but you didn't say about air defense uh, weapons. Yes, it's the main what what is necessary for Ukraine. How it to arrange? Because you see, the some of for for instance your colleague from France. Mr. Macron told, told that no, we don't want to provide no. something because we don't want to be part of the war. No. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, as you know, the, uh, I, th I think one of the most significant uh, contributions that uh, Turkey is currently making uh, are the TB2s, uh, which I think are very, are very valuable. Uh, what the uh, what the UK is, is, is providing, is, as I'm sure you've also seen, uh, our air defences and, and we're helping the, uh, the Ukrainians to understand how to, uh, to, to use them. I think that's entirely, uh, that's entirely reasonable, but I don't uh, think I should really go beyond, uh, beyond what I said. Uh, what I, what I, the general tenor of the meeting, what everybody wants to do, is make sure uh, that as, as Putin ramps it up, as Putin escalates his aggression, that we do ever more to defend and protect uh, the Ukrainians. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.